the area that we're going to talk about uh, is the check the box rules. The specific parts uh, in the regulations that you have to read are actually very, very short, and I've specified them uh, in the uh, in the the assignment uh, for the first week as optional reading. I strongly suggest you look at it if you don't remember if, it from having covered any of this in uh, in 515. Let's go back to the drawing board. Let's say that X has formed Y. Now, I did not put a boundary in yet because I like to speak generally before putting a boundary in. Is an LLC a separate legal entity? OK, I see some nods of heads. Well, maybe, unless it chooses to be a disregarded entity because it has one owner. OK, now this is, this is an excellent thing. You said unless it chooses to be a disregarded entity, and we'll talk a little more about what that is. Does that not make it a legal entity? Oh, I mean, does that make it a non-not legal? Right. I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving double negatives. OK, that election is made, but is it still a legal entity? Yes, yes it is. We're making a distinction between reality and fiction. Reality and fiction. Reality is that an LLC is a real legal entity. It can contract in its own name. It can be sued in its own name. It has organizational documents. It's recognized. Courts look at it and, and say what it is. And that's whether it's a US court or a a court in England or China or anywhere else. Reality is that it is a separate legal person. Now, you just said unless it makes this election and becomes, because we're showing only one owner, we're assuming this is 100% owned, it's a disregarded entity. Well, if reality is it's a real LLC, then, uh, I mean, this so disregarded we, entity status, I mean, who cares about this? Well, interest source is based on then the owner and not the, the parent. Not okay, the, you know, you're absolutely right, uh, but you're, you're getting into details uh, which we want to we wanna be broader first before we get into the details. Individual is a separate taxpayer, but it's not a separate. <clears throat> there's only one taxpayer, but there's still there's the individual and then there's the Right, exactly. So for U.S. federal tax purposes, not necessarily state, unless there's a state law that covers the manner of characterization of a company which has elected for federal purposes to be a disregarded entity or a partnership if there's more than one owner. Only for federal purposes is it ignored. For every other purpose, okay, a few exceptions, but not many, for virtually every other purpose, it reality is, is that it is a legal entity and is respected as such. OK, now let's go back to what you said when you now went into details and said, well, the source of income. OK, and to bring everybody into the same page, what you said is that, uh, that Y, let's say, paid some interest <coughs> to some third party some interest, and because now we're putting the boundary here, so we're saying that uh, Z here is in country A, and this is the US. What you were saying is that 
Well, G, the status of X is what's important in determining the source of interest that Z is earning, not the status of Y. Okay, now that's U.S. tax purposes. What about country A? What about its rules? Does it look to X because of this disregarded entity uh, situation, or does it look to Y? Probably it looks at Y because reality is that Y is a separate person. And this election that has been made under the 7701 regulations to check the box isn't recognized by country A. Uh, yes? Could that be affected if the entity is a hybrid? Is Y itself a hybrid? If country A is recognizing it as a separate entity, okay, that's, uh, that's one possible, that's one likely characterization by uh, country A. The U.S. is looking at it for federal purposes solely as being not a separate person. And therefore, at least with respect to this, yes, why is a hybrid? A, you have a hybrid any time two countries look at an entity or a transaction and characterize it in two different ways. You have hybrid entities, which is what we're looking at here. You have hybrid transactions. Gee, I own this table. I provide it uh, to Jessica there in the back. Now, we have a contract where she has use of this table. Is that a lease? Is that a sale? Uh, or is it even a financial transaction where uh, uh, I've effectively loaned her money? What are the economics of the transaction? And very often, two countries will look at the same thing and one says, gee, it's, a, it's like shares. It's an equity interest. The other one says it's like a debt obligation. Anytime there's two different characterizations by the, by the countries that are relevant to the discussion, you have a hybrid transaction or a hybrid entity. The check the box rules uh, are focusing on the hybrid entity side. So it's, it's really, in a sense, a broad thing. Now, yes, there are, uh, there are terms that we use. They are not legal terms, but they're terms that a lot of people use. If you're from the US, hybrid entity means a uh, an entity, uh, let me uh, let me draw it out. If you're from the U.S. and you have Y here in country A, then if X checks the box for Y so that it's treated for U.S federal tax purposes as if Y is just a division or branch of X and there's no box around it, there's no separate person for federal tax purposes. But country A, of course, sees this, sees the box around it. That's usually referred to as a hybrid, uh, a hybrid uh, entity uh, or subsidiary. Now, if you then have instead a situation where it is not uh, the U.S. looking at it as disregarded and the foreign as looking at it and uh, uh, treating it uh, as a separate entity, but rather instead you have 
let's draw a circle there, uh, and let's say there's somebody else out here that uh, has 10%, and let's say this is 90%, and this is a partnership for country A purposes, but X has checked the box to make this partnership treat it as a corporation, as an association, taxable as a corporation, not as a partnership or disregarded entity. Now this is referred to as a reverse hybrid. Now the real reason why I'm bringing this up now uh, is my experience that people have a hard time sort of getting straight in their minds the dichotomy, the, the fact that where the, che where the box has been checked and a corporation, what would otherwise be treated as a separate legal entity, is going to be treated as a disregarded entity or a partnership. The sort of the mentality that I've experienced in a lot of people is that, well, they think that carries over to reality, and it doesn't. It generally doesn't. So whenever we're looking at uh, organization charts, we're looking at uh, company structures, we have to be very, very attentive to reality and fiction. And that fiction is what's there for US tax purposes. Now, as you get into the uh, project assignment for these various companies, uh, various groups that, uh, that uh, you know, which, whichever one you choose, most of them have been very creative at figuring out how to come up with, you know, structures that, you know, nobody in their worst nightmare would, uh, who worries about administrative matters, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Uh, would ever, you know, dream up. Uh, but uh, they're very carefully constructed so that activities in this box are treated as real by this country, but not treated as real by another country. And this is both entities and transactions. So uh, I, you know, I want to just uh, be very, uh, uh, very clear that this is something that you've got to really keep in your mind. Uh, and you'll see it in spades in the information about these various things. Uh, uh, certainly uh, Apple and Google are, uh, uh, are very, uh, uh, very, uh, uh, you know, big about these things when you look at their uh, their structures. Any questions uh, on anything? Yes. What's the relevance of the ten percent that's owned outside? Oh, that was that was only to be able to say we had a partnership. <laughs> uh, the the re uh, in other words, because the U.S. is pretty unique in having these check the box mm -hmm. rules. Uh, other countries not having checked the box rules, it's normal, uh, their treatment of something as transparent or as opaque, uh, you know, as a separate legal person for tax purposes, will normally depend on the actual entity that has been formed. So that's why I chose a partnership. Now, you can't assume, of course, what another country is going to do. Uh, for example, a, a certain type of partnership in Japan is treated as a taxable person for uh, Japanese purposes. 
Now, we don't run into that very often because foreign barbarian companies normally don't use that form of organization in Japan. So it's, you know, it's something that sort of maybe it's there, but you don't worry about it. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Hong Kong, if its rules are still the same as it was uh, some years ago last time I looked, uh, Hong Kong treats a partnership as a taxable person. But a lot of countries do, in fact, uh, China included, uh, treat partnerships as, uh, as uh, transparent. So that's why in looking at a reverse hybrid, I chose to you know, use a partnership uh, because normally with partnership, it's only going to be normally with partnerships that another country will treat an entity in reality as transparent for tax purposes. Uh, I put into the slides uh, in case it's uh, in case it's uh, useful. I will not necessarily use uh, these. I, I tend to uh, you know draw squiggly lines to indicate a branch or uh, a disregarded entity or so on. But these are uh, things that you'll sometimes see on organization charts. And you know it's helpful to keep a copy of that uh, somewhere where you know you can find it. 